It's time for today's Face Off on Fox Soul. Challengers Quan LX and Big Angry Adams ready to go blow by blow on those hot topics. Face Off on Fox Soul starts right now. Middle of painting my nails right now, and I just did this side white, and I'm gonna do this side blue. Going to do blue as usual. Just do some self care time. I think everybody should do some self care for themselves. For me, it's nail painting. I'm sorry if that offends any of you guys. My favorite nail polish to use though is the Sally Hansen Insta Dry because it only takes 60 seconds to dry. While they dry, it only takes 60 seconds. I'm gonna tell you guys why I paint my nails. Now, there's really no no crazy reason to it. Um, it helps me not bite my nails. Um, I went to a salon one time and I decided to um, pick out a color and I thought it looked nice. I know a lot of people disagree, a lot of people don't like it, but I'm just gonna be myself and do what I think looks nice. In this round, here's Charles Big Angry Adams. Quan Al Duke freshman Phenom is not just a great basketball player. He obviously tied Zion's mark for single game scoring. He pushed the Blue Devils from being mediocre all the way to the Elite Eight, knocking out our Houston Cougars. Great athlete, but also a marketing genius. This guy has, has secured name, image, and likeness money, NIL deals from Sally Hansen, one of the world's largest purveyors of nail polish and he did it with Instagram videos he did it with TikTok reels he's gonna make millions of dollars before he goes on to make millions of dollars and I'll tell you I don't have a lot in common with that young man he's a great athlete but I enjoy a good pedicure and I think we got that in common hats off to Mr. McCain get that paper sir I just want to say to young Jared McLean McCain Dear brother, I watched your video, your Instagram post, and since that post has gone quote unquote viral, you've now received an NIL deal from a company that pushes makeup for females, for women. And so now Sally has, her company has given you a contract and you're now making money by portraying yourself in a feministic role any man that wants to have self-care time, it's all right to get pedicures and manicures. I get them too. I mean, I can tell you got some beautiful too. nails there. But one thing I don't do is put polish on my nails. You don't even a little clear because, polish? No, because real men know you get your nails buffed. You don't get them polished. But where's the real but men But I want to say this to that young black brother. There's a movement in America to demasculate black men there's a movement in America to make black men think being the real man that God made you to be is toxic masculinity. Satan is after the hearts and minds of young black men, and he's going after black mothers to get them to authorize and co-sign the feminism of your young black boys. They put black rappers and black athletes in dresses. Brother, you got some money for painting your nails. What's next? Pay you to put on lipstick? What's next, brother? If they pay you enough money, you'll be on the runway with a pair of panties on? We got to buck this, and we got to finesse the dress and tell them, hell no, are we going to allow you to put us in these feministic roles with polish, dresses, wigs? What's next? Have you watched him play basketball? Yes, I have. Okay. Does he play basketball in a, I don't like the term, He's a good player, but he's not a great player. In fact, had the University of Houston star point guard not got injured, they would have whooped you know, Duke. I was curious. They would have whooped Duke. I was curious why you put this story out here, why you feel so, you and your feelings about the Cougars, right? No, I'm in my feelings so, about this I black am, brother letting some rich white company get him to paint his I, damn I, nails for a check. I cheer for the Cougars. But you know what? They didn't get the job done. And Mr. McCain is not only getting his job done on the basketball court, he's getting his job done off the court, securing those ends so he can help himself and his family have a better existence. He's not doing anything feminized. He, you know, he knew, he knew some grandpas like me and you were going to get all butthurt about it over there in North Carolina. Mr. So McCain, the real by saying, I hope it doesn't offend dear anybody. brother Jared, this is a man getting paid. This is the wrong path. Why? Dear brother now, Jared, what, what harm? Do you realize the scripture, the Bible says 
that no effeminate man will ever see the kingdom of God. Brother Jared, do you realize that the last days are not to come there here now? And Satan wants to go to war with anybody that's standing in the gap to fight for what God wants in America today. You know, the saddest what thing. What profit, brother, the, the a man to gain the whole do, world and lose his soul? The saddest thing that you do is using the Bible as a vehicle, and I'm a Muslim, the New Testament. And I'm a Muslim, a but I'm talking to these brothers from the... Holy book they claim well, to believe in. Well, you don't know what, what religion oh, he Oh, he said, he said in an earlier okay. interview he was a part of a Christian upbringing. Okay. I read so, that driving again, up here. Again, again, you are only criticizing him because they beat the Cougars and because you have this kind of, uh, this penchant for They would not have homophobia. beaten the Cougars had the starting point guard for U of okay. H not got we, hurt. We don't have any idea. He got hurt in the first but, half very early, didn't play anymore, and Duke only won by okay. three. But again, he's a great athlete. He tied one of Zion's biggest records. He's playing for one of the best universities, best basketball programs in the history of NCAA basketball. He's also making money because finally athletes are being allowed to get some paper. He created all himself marketing Right? You get a manicure, you get a pedicure. I don't put you, no I, polish I on my care. toes or my who hands. Who are you to judge? And the thing is, you know, I'm time, not judging that young brother. I'm reminding him of the standard that God put in place. But that's and that's true. what all real See, men you know, should do. One time, as a police officer, I, made, I went to a house where there was a disturbance. And it was a son who had recently gotten out of prison, arguing with his mom and his aunt. Mom's throwing his stuff out in the yard. And one of the things she threw out was a Bible. And I didn't like seeing a Bible in the dirt, so mm. I picked it up, and I said, were you, were you throwing this way? She goes, yeah, it's his, it's his Bible. It's prison Bible. Mm. So you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it to a, a you know, gift the book. And I looked in it, and it was an Aryan Brotherhood prison Bible. And they had written all these rules and highlighted passages to justify their deep-seated hatred and racism. Was that the King James Bible. Version? Okay. And the, I mean, was that the King James Version? And that is version? exactly what you're doing. Was that the Roman Catholic Version? Was that the Protestant okay. Version? I get, also, I know I know the Mormon gonna, Version written by Brigham Young bar. say the same thing. I know you're, so the Aryan Brotherhood is in compliance with the Mormon faith that's not and my what point. they said by Again, black people? Not my that point. Roman Catholic Version? My point Just is some of these Bibles have been tampered with, with racism. Take a religious text and use it to forward hate. But, it doesn't but that's make what the, the Bible right. has done, period. The truth, no, absolutely not. The when, New Testament when white folks took the Bible the hatred. and portrayed oh, Jesus I'm, and all the angels and all the prophets as okay. white, when that's a damn lie, okay. it's the same thing. So it's the same you ain't thing. no better than the Aryan oh, Brotherhood. So we, so we agree. You ain't no better than the Aryan Brotherhood. You and your homophobia and the Aryan oh, Brotherhood no, are disagree. doing the same damn thing. We I'm, glad, disagree. I'm glad you can admit it on national TV that you're just a bigot and you use the Bible to push your bigotry. Bless your heart. Bless your heart, Jared McCain. Get that money. We kind of have a routine where we are on the floor and then they come off at the 12 minute mark. That's when you um, We just, I don't know, and we come in and we do our pregame stuff. I'm, I'm sorry. I. Listen, I, that's nothing intentionally done. In this round, here's Quanell X. So Charles, Louisiana Governor Jeff Landry calls for a new policy that would strip student athletes of their scholarships if they don't come out and stand for the national anthem when it's being played at sporting events in Louisiana. I would like to say to Governor Landry, you need to be properly educated, sir. Do you realize that the same anthem that's being played today was the same anthem that was being played during slavery? For 400 years in this country, Governor Landry, that same anthem that was being played during Jim Crow legislation and segregation is the same anthem. The same anthem was sung, was sung and being played when black people in Louisiana didn't even have a right to vote. And they had to pass certain tests about how many blades of grass was in a front yard, a poll tax, just to get a right to vote in southern states like Louisiana. And the coach of LSU already said it was not intentional. But this ain't nothing but a racist cracker 
who's trying to subtly threaten black college athletes in Louisiana. That if you don't stand up and honor the flag the way we want you to, well, then we'll strip you of your scholarship. I say to Governor Landry, why don't you clean the damn anthem up? Because that anthem does not include everybody. Since America's gotten away from her shame of her past, how about we produce a new anthem that's inclusive of everybody and then talk about standing for that one? I tell my son to stand out of respect to the anthem, but I'll be damned I let a man like him threaten to strip student athletes of the scholarships if they don't do it the way he likes them when to. When you say a man like Governor Landry, that's right. what do you mean? A racist cracker well, like Governor Landry. Well, why do you, uh, what makes him a racist in this specific situation? Because he's threatening students of color. That's what he's doing. Well, he's because the LSU basketball okay. team was a team full of black young women. Let's be real. Let's stop pretending like we don't know what he's talking about. They here. got white players on the team. Yeah. Two. Okay. Team full of black okay. women. Well, here, here's the thing. Uh, Jeff Landry and I have a lot in common, okay? We're both crackers. No, I mean, we're both white men that worked as police officers while finishing our undergraduate education and going to law school, right? He's got a lifetime of public service after being a police officer. He was also in the, in the National Guard or the Louisiana National Guard, and but did not get a lot of traction early on in his political career until he robustly embraced extremism, which of course is usually what is required to get famous in the punditry spaces, mm -hmm. right? And nowadays with our incredibly polarized, uh, you know, primaries across this country in the political spaces, you have to take these extremist pandering takes. And I think just like his, and his positions on the LGBT community are in a, Exact alignment with yours. Y'all would get along swimmingly about that. Now, I do think this is him pandering to the far right people who were frustrated and, and mad about people kneeling or not participating. I don't believe, and I, I'm an LSU guy, I do not believe the coach when she says, oh, well, we, we just don't, we were off. I think that's full of crap, right? Clearly, to avoid the kneeling issue and the back push that she would have gotten from LSU fans in the state. Because in Louisiana, they got the Saints, but really, I don't care if you didn't finish eighth grade, I don't care if you went to Magnese or, you, or where he went, USL, ULL, whatever it is now, everyone's an LSU fan. Everyone follows in the state of Louisiana, everyone follows Louisiana sports. And they most certainly would have upset fans if people were kneeling. It's a, it's a strangely conservative state, but Here's the thing, if you have a public school paying kids money to play, and he has a solid rule that is directed at all student athletes, not just student athletes of color, because that would be racist, but all student athletes saying, hey, you gotta stand. You gotta be out there and you gotta but stand. But the anthem I'm itself is racist. No, it's not. No, break the wording down. Oh, come break on. the wording down of the come national on. anthem. No safe place for a slave. Let's okay, talk about okay, that. That's, that. So let's that be is not clear. Included let's in be the clear. Current iteration the author of the, uh, of the it, anthem right. was a racist. But, oh, I don't disagree. But the anthem Charles, was modified my, Charles, because my America recognized who fought in that World War II. bigotry. Although you're the biggest bigot Charles, I know, my own that uncle most people who fought in bigotry, World War II okay. told me, laying in his hospital bed, he said, "Nephew," he was telling me about the war. He said, do you know that the German prisoners of war that we captured ate better than what we did as American That's black horrible. soldiers? It's obscene. He said, we had to give up our beds and our quarters to the white German soldiers and we slept outside on the ground. Hold on. And those Hold same Hold Hold black Hold soldiers Hold came back to America and they was waving the American flag and playing the anthem, and they couldn't uh, even drink either. out the same water Hold fountain on. as their white uh, brothers uh, uh, in uh, arms. And that's disgusting, and I hate to get off topic, but now you have black American soldiers coming back from wars in the Middle East, white American soldiers coming back from wars in the Middle East, white Latino American soldiers coming back from wars in the Middle East, getting displaced out of their beds, getting food taken out of their families' mouths, to give that money to illegal immigrants into this country. But we as so black wait, people have oh, always wait, wait. lived that. Okay, 
But like, after the Vietnam but, War, the anthem, America helped establish Vietnamese changed. people in America and took again, the resources that was again, allocated for fighting the, the poor, anthem, the war on poverty, and gave it to Vietnamese about people. Is no longer the anthem. So that America, ain't nothing new for black folks. Most Americans recognize, you don't, but most Americans recognize that bigotry based on immutable characteristics, judging people by the color of their skin, is repugnant and disgusting. But the coach right? said it wasn't and, intentional, and this, Charles. Okay, why do you go to the extreme okay, like this? But why do you go to the extreme okay, like look, this? Look, well, we know why. He wants, he wants this. He wants us talking no, about let me this tell you bull what he crap. Won't. We know why. Let me tell you he what he wants won't. To fire up his white base. Let me tell you what he like, won't. Oh, we're going to stand. But there's also a bunch he of conservative blacks careful. in Louisiana that don't tolerate this kind of people that love this country. I know you don't, right? But there oh, is no. a reason why so this many people want to come from Africa country to the United Earth. States, from Central America, America to America is the greatest I'm country glad. on Earth. But great don't make you good. Remember that okay, great so don't make you good. Okay. She's the greatest then, country. Then why not in go to finance, a good country? Finance, why not go to a She's the greatest country. country in she's the greatest country in education and health and opportunity for Everyone people. Everyone wants to come here. But because it's when a you great say why not go somewhere else? Our anthem, no, I didn't say you. I said why don't other people that are coming from other nations, okay. Central America, coming from uh, why even the people that make it to Western Europe I ain't still talking trying about to come them. here. I'm talking about black people. Okay. Why do so many black non-Americans in the diaspora, why are they still Man, trying to come in? this racist white boy better wake up and smell the coffee. In this round, here's Charles Big Angry Adams. Quite in the last few years, we've seen an incredible decline in the number of new hired white cisgender, white straight men in corporate America. Incredible decline, whereas in every other group you've seen a, a marked increase, right? And we, straight we have, black hold men? On, I'm hold sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. In, in, in the university academic settings, uh, almost no political conservatives exist in that space anymore. And the hiring over the last decade, just like the admissions into leading universities, has, has evidenced an incredible incredible level of discrimination against white straight men, right? They need not apply. And we're continuing to see a number of jobs that are being created that wrap into the job description, not only that a, a white person shouldn't apply, but continue to paint this portrait of the evils of whiteness, right? And it, it's horrifying that we would have anyone, right? That we would have anyone suggest than any race, but let's read a little twit. This is for the St. Louis Park Public School District in Minnesota. It's not associated with St. Louis. It is about a 50% white, 20% African American, and the other 30% is a mixture of, of ethnic minorities, but a, a, a middle income, just racially diverse school system that does have slightly more of an African American population than the national average. And this is what they're asking for. They're asking for an assistant superintendent that can actively listen for both spoken and unspoken racial concerns, which is, hey, sure, you want people to be racially aware. Seek multiple racial perspectives. Well, isn't that wonderful to look at, you to know, try to engage in empathy and see each issue from the shoes of other people. Examine the presence and the role of, in quotes, whiteness in systems and structures and are open to feedback regarding their own racial blind spots. The only race that is called out, and then we're seeing this time and time again, is, is this modern accepted belief that white people are somehow born with a predilection or a bias built into them that they must atone for and they must, must address. And when, they're, when people are called out on this, oh, well, well, I don't mean be good white people, I don't mean allies, I don't mean you, I just mean white, right? And then we're shocked when, when people are assaulting, then people of color are just punching white girls walking down the street in New York in the face, or older ladies, and we have seen so much racialized animosity directed at white people in terms of violent crime. In fact, in some cities, like New York, for example, 
that typically murder is racially homogenous, right? Like white people kill white people, uh, black people kill black people, Latino people kill them. Uh, right now, 2023 numbers, you have more African Americans killing white people than white people kill, which is unprecedented, right? And you, you have more African American women killing white people than white men, which is also equally unprecedented, right? And it's because we're saying it's okay to hate white people because of the color of their skin. And just like it was wrong before, when all the damn stupid, ignorant, racist, that dominated the spaces in America, that led to Jim Crow, that led to segregation. It's literally just as stupid as this new modern, well, it's okay segregation because we're you segregating white You do realize this is a seven-minute segment. Hey, you know what? Talk all you and want. And you went on for four you minutes know, and 15 right. seconds. Hey, you know what? At least I'm not quoting the quick. Bible to justify hatred. Let me get hatred. to it real quick for the little time I have left in this segment. First of all, there is a, an attack not just against white straight men in America. There is an attack against straight men, period, in America. Okay, Especially so God fearing straight men of all races in America. Have you noticed, Charles, on some of the major news networks, all of the straight black pundits who were masculine, who used to be commentators on these networks like CNN, they got rid of them. And now what they replaced them with is very feministic men to take their place. Do you realize, Charles, that we need superintendents in America to be more open minded to all of its constituents? Right, but why does that because have to involve the history of this why nation? Does that have it has not been a condemnation you went on of for white four, folk. You, you went on for four minutes. Man, come on. Charles, this country needs superintendents to look at things from a different racial perspective than their own. This country needs superintendents that will pull from every resource, from every culture and community, work, let them work together to define who the school will be. Too often in America, all of the textbooks were written by white people. All of the curriculums written by white people. All of the passing and testing standards implemented by white people. But none of that's so, happening now. So, now, it's still happening. In fact, that is white happening. people, no, it is Charles, white liberal Charles, progressives Charles, who are doing things like shutting Charles, down gifted and talented schools. All of the schools, standardized make testing smart black in America kids. is still oh, implemented no. by white uh, institutions I mean, and white organizations, about Charles. In Houston because kids that's can't pass racist and they don't as hell, Charles. Charles. You know what's racist? is telling young black kids that they can't achieve. No, and what's telling racist white kids is that telling born black children that own only meeting white standards qualifies you to be educated. Oh, it, it, that's like, racist. That's such nonsense. So, We're not talking about white standards. You gotta teach racist? math. You gotta no. teach English. But stop you lying to white science. kids. And you know what? Stop lying, lying to kids. white no, students. Stop lying to black kids. You're lying and to tell white them they students. Because black kids you are got just white as students smart as white kids. That they discovered but America. they got progressive you got white students believing that the came. founding fathers were great And this is the kind of crap men. that's living to it. You got white students believing hey, that America is all going to stick up A nation of equality. Oh, hell no. Hell no. That's absolute nonsense. This racist damn country. Tell the truth to white students. Ladies and gentlemen, in this country, we have to truly reevaluate. Do we want to be a nation that's inclusive of all of our citizens? We should follow the example of Germany. After the Jewish Holocaust, they changed their anthem because they knew that it was offensive to what had happened to people of the Jewish race in the Jewish community in Germany and around the world. We need more superintendents to be honest with white students that they have been fed a generation of lies in this country. The founding fathers were all great men who loved people when many of them were slave owners and child predators. Telling these children that Columbus discovered America still, and that's an outright lie. Telling them that the founder of mathematics and science and that open heart surgery and medicine all came from Eurocentric men and institutions, that is a lie. So white children need a superintendent who can bring them into a real world of truth and help young black and brown students not feel inferior in America's academic institutions, the public school system of America, because too many black kids, such as myself, growing up in school, we didn't see anything that would resemble our people's contributions in education. This is another example of Quanell's penchant for being dishonest. Quanell and I grew up in the same state at the same time, graduated the same year, and Texas in our, my, both of our lifetimes in the 70s and 80s had a very robust, in, in my opinion, far more robust and diverse discourse in your history classes and throughout. 
and I do think we have taken an incredible conservative bent as of late, but to suggest that it's this mono-racial discourse that, no, it's absurd. In fact, to the contrary now, that many white kids are being taught about, just like this cl advertisement clearly is looking for, someone to school people on the evils of whiteness, as if white people are somehow born bad. And that math, l coming from people decrying racism generally, is circular idiocy, right? If you can define one group of people based by the color of their skin, then you can define all groups of people by the colors of their skin. And the truth is you can't define anyone by their epidermis. In fact, our new overfocus, our new clamoring for segregation, we have all types of universities arguing for, for white free spaces. We have all this, and it's just a repugnant, right? But if you stand up for it, if you say, hey, this is, and I mean, stand up against it and say, hey, this is wrong, well, then you're a racist because you don't want change. You know what the change I want? Is I want a society that doesn't condemn anyone based on the way they're born, and instead, condemns them solely based on their actions, right? Which is the exact same thing that Martin Luther called for, the Martin Luther King Jr. You know, let's, let's be better and let's stop talking about people based by their race. That's it for the face-off on Fox Soul. We'll catch you next time.